health care and health reform is not a poor person's issue anymore. It's affecting everybody. It affects um, middle class people who are losing their jobs for the first time and finding themselves um, without insurance and without access to care they need. Over 45 million, some say 47 million people are falling through the cracks. And those are just the ones that we're counting. So the reality is that having so many people, such a large percentage of our population, uninsured is really proving to be a huge financial burden for all of us. Over the last 25 years in my career, I've watched things get more and more complicated and more and more difficult for people who are trying to do the best for themselves and their families. I'm also um, very concerned uh, about the quality of care being disseminated right now to low-income families because of all the barriers to health care that, that we see here in Chicago. When one goes to the emergency room for care, either for yourself or a family member for emergency type care, you'll find that there are lots and lots of individuals there looking for regular, ordinary medical care that if they had insurance, they would be able to find in the doctor's office. We need reform that includes a comprehensive option that all people in this country can buy into so they can have access to the types of coverage they need in order to take care of their health from the beginning so they can have preventive health care to keep them from getting sick and storming emergency rooms and engaging in the highest, most expensive care that they possibly could. The way the system works right now is that we're reimbursing doctors for not having tests for people early on. And what happens is if you have cancer, if you have diabetes, if you have high blood pressure, anything like that, and it's not caught early, you're going to have long-term disability. I mean, I've had so many patients who have come to me because their insurance has denied what they once said they were going to claim, or they realize they can't do this test anymore, or this won't be covered anymore, or, or they get the insurance, you know, revoked or, or something of the sort and it's just ridiculous to have that kind of system in place where where we have this private insurance model where profit is, is maximized through denial of care and that's what private insurance is they're, they're answerable only to their shareholders not to the patients um, I can think of one case one of the physicians here told me about where he had a patient who was had some heart disease and he was in the hospital but the hospital he was in didn't have the facilities to do cardiac catheterization and he wanted to transfer the patient to Cook County Hospital where they could provide those services, but they were full didn't have any beds. So he called one of the other local hospitals and told them that, you know, he, if he, they would accept our patient, the patient needed catheterization, otherwise he's going to die. And they said, no, we, but the patient didn't have insurance, so they, when he told them they didn't have insurance, they refused to take the patient. They said, well, the patient will die if you don't take this. Well, we're not going to take him. And the patient died. Being that we're in one of the richest countries of the world, it's um, very painful for me to see that things like this are still going on. What we know from the women that we deal with is that a lot of the very simple wellness-based solutions are either not available to them in their market or um, from their providers or not covered by the insurance plans they have. And if they're uninsured, then of course they have an impossible task of accessing things that can really change their life that are simple and inexpensive. It's terrible as a small employer in the health insurance market. One of the things that I've realized is that there is a financial incentive for employers to discriminate against people with high health care costs. It seems uh, fundamentally unjust that people with any kind of health trouble who need this service the most cannot get it because we have this silly market-driven system. I believe in national health care and that everybody needs health care insurance, not only because it's part of my profession, but also because I've been touched personally by um, people in my life. It relates to my personal family. I have cousins and nephews that basically do not have the ability to access services. Um, everyone feeling that they're able to provide for their families and provide health care for their families is the thing that I hear most from my patients who are uninsured or underinsured and I think it would provide a lot of um, a sense of safety and a sense of pride for all of my patients if they had the ability to find um, low cost high quality health care for themselves. The reason why I think that it's so important is because I feel that our health care system right now is inhibiting people from participating in um, everyday activities of daily living. I believe that we can make people live longer and be healthier and still spend less money on our health care system. We urge 
urge Congress and the President to support a public option. It is absolutely essential, particularly for women who are bearing the brunt of the broken health care system that we have now. We need to make sure, absolutely sure, that there is a robust public option. We need health reform today. I am a proponent of health reform. I support health care reform. I believe in the public option uh, at the very minimum. I think without a publicly funded and publicly managed system that there will always be people that fall through the cracks. We, could, we would just be so much better off if we just had a public option. I hope that you join me in supporting the kind of health reform that we need, the kind of health reform that will truly make a difference in the lives of people who desperately